To present our next award, please welcome the president of West Group Properties, accompanied by longtime Coast Mental Health supporter Peter Wessick and Mary Wessick. This award recognizes that person who, in spite of their addiction to drugs and alcohol, has managed to stay in recovery and go on to make a significant contribution to society. I was living in an SRO. It was infested with bugs and mice, and I was like five months pregnant, and that seemed pretty bleak. I didn't know what to do. For most of her childhood, her father was in prison. In her 20s, she married his friend and they moved to Manitoba. Soon, they had two children. Then he was arrested and sent to jail. She thought she was coping until she was sexually assaulted. Her testimony sent her attacker to prison, but left her with a lifetime sentence of hepatitis C and HIV. 11 months later, her car hit black ice and flipped several times. Lucky to be alive, she was given Percocet, a painkiller to which she quickly became addicted. She and her daughters moved back to Vancouver, and her addiction moved with them. Unable to get a prescription, she turned to heroin to feed her habit. It was the worst decision of her life, the life of Deborah Carter. With addiction comes chaos, and with chaos comes consequences. In Vancouver, Deborah and her daughters had been living in a basement suite at her mother's house. But with the addiction out of control, and when attempts to curtail her addiction failed, Deborah's family kicked her out. Her mom kept the children. For the next four years, Deborah lived homeless on the streets of Vancouver or in Stanley Park. She sold drugs, stole whatever she had to do to get a fix. Her life was spinning out of control as she fell deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of addiction and homelessness and crime, the unholy trinity of life on the streets. Each day was about the next fix. Each hour was about survival. Each minute lost in the agony of unresolved issues and suffering. She was alone on the hard streets of Vancouver, walking towards jail time or death. Change often happens in such small ways we don't recognize that it's happening. Although she didn't know it at the time, change began for Deborah when she learned she was five months pregnant. At the time, it was not good news, and her daughter Ariel was born by emergency C-section at Vancouver Women's Hospital. Deborah developed a drug-resistant staph infection and almost died. She and Ariel were in the hospital for nine weeks, and then Ariel was taken from her, placed in foster care. And at that moment, change was a reality. You see, at that moment, Deborah became determined to get her daughter back, to be the mother her children deserved, to rebuild her life no matter what it took. And what did it take? It was the hardest step of all. Deborah asked for help. With her cry for help, Deborah was placed in a six-week drug program at Women's Hospital. There she went through the agony of getting clean and began to work on the issues that led to her addiction. She began having her baby daughter for visits, first for one visit per week for 90 minutes, and increasing to four sleepovers per week. She joined Crabtree Corner's single mother support group. She continued with alcohol and drug counseling through the Pender Clinic and the Pacific Spirit Clinic. Through her work with counselors, she began to gain a deeper understanding of the issues she had faced. Sexual assault, trauma, poverty, homelessness, abandonment, and threats to her personal health with acknowledgement came healing. And although progress by nature was slow, it was also steady. Because Deborah was determined her life would change. By the time Ariel was one year old, she was living with Deborah full time, and Deborah was beginning to heal. With sobriety came stability, and with stability came a new outlook on life. Deborah wanted to help, to give back to the community, to use her hard won skills to help others. She applied for employment with Crabtree Corners and soon was a coordinator of their fetal alcohol spectrum disorder program. Deborah was helping mothers who struggle with issues of addiction and parenting. She worked at growing professionally by taking courses at the Justice Institute, and she has mentored hundreds of women on the road to sobriety. 
Today, she is the homelessness prevention worker and single mother's facilitator and outreach worker for Crabtree Corners. She also works directly with downtown Eastside sex workers as an on-call assistant at the Wish Drop-In Center. She has an exceptional reputation within the community for providing resources, advice, and emotional support to women, men, and youth faced with homelessness, addiction, violence, and poverty. And she cares for her aging mother, maintains a close and loving relationship with her three daughters, and she is the grandmother of Harlow, with whom she has a special and loving bond. To see Deborah with her daughter or to see her with her granddaughter is to know the definition of love. My daughter turned 29 yesterday. My middle daughter is 24 and my youngest is 11 and she's funny and creative and a really good kid. I figured if I couldn't do it for myself at the time, at least I could try and figure out something better for her of me realizing maybe I could do it for me too. She has been on an amazing journey. She's an amazing woman with the courage to come back. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Courage to Come Back Award recipient for addiction, Deborah Carter. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you tonight. I would like to acknowledge the other five recipients. You are all an inspiration. This award, this night, is not something I ever imagined happening to me. When I look back, it's sometimes easier to connect to the pain and loneliness and the struggle just to survive. My life as a heroin addict was a daily grind of trying to get my needs met. Things like housing, food, clean clothes, all came second to drugs. Even my family took a back seat at this time. I was lonely, scared, and lost. I had nothing, I felt like nothing, and every interaction with people seemed to confirm that. But tonight I stand here receiving this lovely award, and this Courage Award process has made me think a lot about my past. My past holds a bucket load of bad stuff and I carried it around inside of me every day. But there was also good. And good is what led me here today because kindness defined my outcome and continues to shape who I am today and where I go tomorrow. <sighs> Sorry. I know many of you in this large audience are influential and I'm here to tell you more, you have more power than you know because inside of you is the power of kindness. Kindness carries no dollar value. When I became homeless, my life began a downward spiral. I was doing drugs and doing horrible things to get them, something all new to me. I was out of control. I reached out for help, I searched for it, and I begged. But I was told, basically, get your shit together, it's your problem, figure it out. Well, I couldn't do it by myself. I was shamed, hurt, and brought down even further than you can imagine. My spiral continued until my pregnancy caught me off guard. I had my precious daughter all growing inside of me that I had to protect. I reached out again for help, but got nothing, nothing but more shame. The first doctor I interacted with treated me with such scorn, and I was almost five months pregnant. So for the next month and a half, I didn't seek any more medical help. By this time, I was getting sick. I ended up at Women's Hospital, and during my month's stay at a hospital, there was a nurse. 
a busy, ordinary nurse, but this nurse had the extraordinary talent. She didn't judge. She didn't judge me. <laughs> the pregnant heroin act. What an extraordinary act of kindness that was. For the first time, oh, for the first time during a long, heartless journey I had been on, I felt hope and I felt human. I began to see a flicker of light at the end of my very long tunnel, and I took those feelings and forced to move forward for myself. I do not know the name of this nurse, and I'm sure she has long forgotten me, but her kindness during her regular workday ignited my spirit and allowed me to tell, tell myself that I was worthy of this change. It's not like I didn't mess up again, but I learned to look for those people who were kind. When I ended up at the YWCA Crabtree Corner, I used the daycare program and kindness struck again. My former manager, Nancy, took the time to talk to me. She asked me questions and found out what I was about, what I was really about, and not all the drama that came before. She encouraged me and thought of ways in which I could be useful around Crabtree, ways that I could show kindness to others. And that's what I hope I do as the homeless prevention worker for the Y. I thank you, Nancy, for encouraging me pushing me to try new things and having faith in me. You are a woman of grace and much wisdom. I would also like to thank the YWC Metro Vancouver for all the opportunities that you have given to me to grow as a person. And I also want to thank my three beautiful daughters for the love that they show me, the trust I see in their eyes once again, and the strength to continue each day. Along the way, there were many others, too many to mention here today, but I thank you for your kindness and support. So tonight, I'd like to pay tribute to people who hug rather than hate, to those who put out a hand in friendship rather than violence, and to those who through a single kind moment have shown the power and value of kindness. You never know when or how a moment will change your life. Thank you for this award. I receive it gladly to honor everyone who struggles to see the light at the end of their tunnel. Thank you.